What's up guys? It's Mike Gray. Welcome to the channel. Thanks to Bron Color for sponsoring this video. What's going on guys? First off, I want to start by saying I hope you're having a happy new year. We're starting this new year off with a different type of video. A video that a lot of you have been requesting for a very long time and I am proud to announce that we're bringing on my mentor and a good friend of mine, Tyler Shields, to assist us in learning how to properly use strobes and the benefits of using strobe lighting. I want to thank Bron Color for sponsoring this video and I hope you guys enjoy this one. And test, 16, perfect. How are you feeling? Feeling like a million bucks. You ready to go? I'm ready. The suit looks great. Thank you. Perfect. This is a parabolic, so this is gonna wrap. Parabolics wrap all the light around. A soft box or an umbrella, you can get more of a shadow okay. of your, from yourself. Gotcha. This, it's a little bit harder because it's such a bigger sphere of light. It's the worst when you don't make sure yeah. this thing's turned on and then nothing fires. Yeah. And then we go, boom, and that's it. Now I'm done. Yeah. I got the photo got I needed, the right? Then we, then we just work it from there, yeah. right? So let's try now to rotate this light right behind me. If you were doing that with a softbox, you're gonna see the shadow right in front of him. Right. But I mean, I'm standing literally in front of him. Yeah. And this light is wrapping all the way around me. Right there, that's perfect. Now you're, you're obviously, you know, much bigger than me. Yeah, yeah. And do you see any shadow? Nope. Right? Nope. Nothing's hitting him. Nothing's hitting him. Because this is just wrapping all the way around you, and there's light on your back right now. I mean, you could probably feel the heat, yeah, right? Yeah. But th that light's hitting you, but it's just all going right over top of him. Gotcha. That's where the benefit of the parabolic comes in. We could pop a wireless strobe in here exactly the same and get this shot. Because this shot we're doing right now is at f16 mm -hmm. or f8 or f56 or whatever. You can do that on the wireless ones, no problem. Okay. I have this because I'll do f45 or f64 and take these to max power, yeah. that's not for most people. Yeah, yeah. But if you're doing portraits on an 8x10 and you want to do F64, you're going to need this. Okay. The wireless doesn't go to that power. Okay. We're going to go to the umbrella here. This is something that's very interesting, Dylan. You probably know this. So a lot of people shoot these umbrellas the wrong way. So there's this whole thing that I've seen now where photographers take these umbrellas and they're shooting it like, okay, so say, say I'm shooting Mike. They point the umbrella and they shoot this way. Now, through, through this, right? Now, I don't know where or how that happened, but that's not the way it's designed. Now, there's no rules in photography. You can do whatever you want. Right. If you want to shoot through this and then a thing of plastic and then a brick wall, fine. Whatever you want to do. But the way that this thing is actually designed is that it's, this is just for everybody, it's meant to be this way, okay? The actual design of this thing is not this, it's this. That's why this rod is on it. So if we want it to have one style light, the, the further away creates a different light, and then the closer in, you can bring it all the way in, so you can come in all the way that close, and that makes it really contrasty and tight and whatever. So if, let's say we push out, it gets softer and softer because this gets bigger and bigger. Okay. Now, I don't know what this does because I've never actually shot that. <laughs> it protects the person's eyes from the light. It protects the yeah, person's eyes from the light. That's, that, that's right, yes. Yeah. So whatever, somehow this has become a massive misconception in the photography community. And I'm here now today to hopefully end that. But hey, if they're happy with the photos, fine. Do whatever you want. Now this is kind of like a little bit of a, they call it, the kids call it a Rembrandt-ish mm -hmm. vibe. Yep. You see how the shadow's hitting him? But you've got the exact light cascading here on the eye. And then it fills this shadow here. Mm. Right? And then here you've got all the light. All the light. 
okay? Yeah. Now, you can obviously get more dramatic, more open. So look at me, chin down just a touch right there. That's perfect. Hold that. So, so keep looking through it really quick. Okay. So watch when I shape it here. See how much more contrasty? Yeah. Yep. Now it's harsh. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if I pull it out here, it softens it. And so that's giving you soft, but without that contrast. So if you go too harsh, you don't see any of the detail here. And then this is giving me the shadow that we want there. When you're metering, like let's say we want to be at F8, Portra 400. So if you want to go a little bit over on film, you can, and it will be amazing. Some people will go over one or two stops because film has such latitude, right. right? If you're doing this on digital, I'm sorry, but <laughs> you don't want to overexpose, right? right? And, if, and even if you're doing it on digital, you still should look at the light meter because the screens on the back of the camera can lie to you, right? So if you were doing this on film, eight at seven, you're gonna be very happy. Yeah, hit me with the test. Perfect. The other big misconception is 125, right? That's your kind of basic strobe. But you can shoot on a strobe all the way down to 30 or 15 and someone can be moving. The strobe will freeze it. It's not about the shutter speed, it's about the flash duration. It's about how fast that strobe goes up. So I could take this camera, I could be at F8, I could roll this all the way down to 30th of a second, right? And hold there, boom. At a 30th of a second, or 125 or 60, he's perfectly still, because we're in a controlled environment. There's no sunlight. Mm -hmm. If you do that outside during the day in the sunlight, you're gonna, there's gonna be all kinds of problems. Yeah. This parabolic, we have filled an entire scene with eight to 10 people, right? So with, with one of these, you can fill and you can match the power of the sun. So you can do massive exteriors, you can do massive shots, where you have interior lighting, exterior lighting, the whole deal. To me, that's a big misconception is people think like, okay, I can only use strobes outside if it's this. You can use strobes outside with a multitude of things. I mean, you've done it a ton of times now. So you have the wireless strobe, you right. take it out. And have you used this guy outside? With the rain, the rain Right, 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 yeah. Oh. And, it, and when you have this for that rain shot, it looks like you have multiple lights. Yeah. It doesn't look like you just have one light, mm -hmm. right? That's the beauty of this thing. The parabolic's not for everybody. It's expensive. They make one that's even way bigger than this, a massive one. And we did a scene where we had, I think there was 12 to 15 people in the shot. And the entire scene was lit just with one light. That's great. So that, that's where the investment right. pays off, yeah, right? Sure. It's like, okay, I only need the one light. I could stand in front of it. I don't have to worry about anything. We could take this umbrella and you know, these are, Fairly inexpensive. Um, they're they're great if you if you need to be compact, run and gun. The quality of light is a little, is obviously different. You get what you pay for, yeah. right? Yeah. Like that, you know the I don't know what how much these things cost now. They're like four thousand yeah. dollars, and these things are a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. So you get what you pay for, but it's all about how you use it and what you're using it for. But if we're doing a massive outside situation with 10 people, we're gonna need a lot yeah, of these. Gonna we're gonna have to yeah. fill every fucking thing possible. None of this is like, this is the way it has to be. Cause every way I ever did anything was technically wrong when I started. Yeah. So, you know, if somebody wants to do, you know, this, <laughs> and this is how they want to shoot it, Actually, you know what? Let me, let's just see something really quick. All right, so here's a, here's a great test. I'll, I'll go on this side. This is the way a lot of people are shooting it. Go ahead. Okay, right now, where we're at, that is reading at a 2.8. Can you read that for me, sir? 2.8. 2.8, okay? He said it, okay? Now, we're gonna roll this guy back around. All I'm gonna do is just adjust it up a little bit. My guess is that's gonna pop out of here at either 11 or 16, and that's just a guess. Go ahead. What did I guess? 11. What does it say? 11. Price is right, motherfucker. <laughs> 11. So when you guys turn that thing around, 
you're cutting five stops of light. You, that way you can, this way you can control it, shape it, and you're using the max power of the, of the strobe. Maybe brown color doesn't want to hear this, but this thing does what the $15,000 pack does. The only difference is the amount of power that you need. And most people don't need the crazy power. Right, right. If you need the power, the power packs are there right. and they're unbelievable. Yeah. For instance, when we did the Ferrari legs photo, massive studio, the car's tiny in there. Yeah. We had some of these for Phil, but we were using the, the packs, multiple packs, because we were lighting, you know, half of a football field. Yeah. So we were able to light that massive wall behind while the Ferrari's there and not have to digitally remove wires or anything like that because you can just set this there. As you have done multiple, multiple times. times. Yeah. There's the C-stand right there. Right here, boom. And that C-stand is quick. Quick. That's the most expensive C-stand known to man, <laughs> but you're ready to go. Yeah. And that's the beauty of these, which you cannot do with the power pack. Yeah. You could do with the power pack because you're strong. <laughs> Big, strong mic, you know? But most people don't want to carry the power pack. Sadie don't want to carry the power pack. Nah. We've got a parabolic here. Here's the amount of time it takes you to put this on the parabolic. Okay, I'm gonna go real slow. We go in, boom, take that guy off for me. Got that guy, and... Done. There it is, MOD, that's it. No wires, no nothing, all ready to go. Boom, that's it. At the end of the day, you can afford what you can afford, right. but personally would invest in good lighting. You don't wanna go cheap with strobes, you really don't. Well, when you think about it, the definition of photography, right, is you're, you're capturing what? Light. Light, so, you know. If you shoot natural light and you shoot landscapes in the day, you know, you're not gonna light the Grand Tetons with this thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Although I'll try. <laughs> but if, if you're doing uh, portraits or any type of, anything where you can control the light, look, I started, my first light was $9. You know what I mean? And I had a light bulb, right? So we did a whole thing with the light bulb and that's great. You gotta do what you can do. Um, but you definitely get what you pay for with brown color. And Michael Muller was right. Yeah, he didn't go on vacation. I did not. He didn't yeah. send me on vacation. No, he was right. Tyler, it's always a Doctor. pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I hope this was informative for you guys as I've been getting a lot of inquiries about doing a video on how to properly use strobes. And it was only right that I got the master himself, uh, Tyler Shields, to come in and show you guys how he uses his strobes. I shoot primarily outside and I use natural light, but I've been leaning more into strobes and it's just a different beast, but it's so much fun. I remember when you stopped having to rely on the sun, when you got the first brown color and you were like, I can shoot at night in my house. <laughs> this is unbelievable. I can shoot at night outside. outside. That's right. And by the way, it's, you know, look, I, I encourage anyone to try any different type of lighting, right? So it's like, okay, if you want to try strobes, try strobes. If you, if you only shoot strobes, go out and shoot natural light. You know what I mean? Like you should experiment. But the ability that these lights give you, in my opinion, are unlike anything else. So, and it opened up a whole world it, for it you. It opened up a, a whole world and I'm, I won't be going back. These strobes are staying with me. Thank you to introducing hey, me course. to Bron That's Color right. and to the That's strobe right. game. And I hope you guys really enjoyed this one. Please like it if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel. Whoa, whoa, whoa. People aren't subscribed already? Not enough. That is a travesty. <laughs> Just a travesty. I won't, hear, I won't stand for it. Hey, they, they, I won't hear they it. They sleep on the channel, Tyler. Is they it, sleep, they you, sleep on it. You've got like 10 million subscribers. Yeah, right? they're like 35,000. What? They, I'm not at 10 million yet. I should be at 10 million. I know, I know man. I can't work. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed this one. I'll see y'all in the next one. <laughs>